The Power Pack comic book series was created in 1984 and was about the Power siblings Jack, Julie, Katie, and Alex and their varying superpower abilities. Naturally, something with this plotline would be a prime candidate for something in the visual medium, which is why this live-action TV pilot from 1991 came out at just the right time. After the original comics cancellation, perhaps it should have been more like this bootleg DVD cover I have. Hey, anyone want to watch Wolverine and Power Pack reenact Mr. Nanny? Or is this Don't Tell Mom the Cyclops is Dead? The TV series differed slightly from the original comics. Example number one, it's a TV series, not a comic book. Also, the characters never appear in costume, their parents are well aware of the kids' powers, and even some of their superpowers themselves differ from the comics. Julie has the power of super speed without the ability to fly, and while Jack is able to change his size, the budget forbids him from turning cloudy. Naturally, all this begins in space, the public access frontier, full of bowling balls and holes in black bed sheets. And in my travels through the galaxies, I've come to understand that power is a delicate force. That's nice. Who the fuck are you? Oh no, the credits are throwing the planets off their alignment. We're all doomed! The disembodied voice needs to stop talking about himself so much. So when the time came for me to pass along my powers, I came upon four young children. And he also needs to stop hanging around children! So with their ability to use those powers wisely, I just hope I didn't make a mistake. You made a horrible mistake! This shit never went to series! Could it be because of the soundtrack budget? Ah, the fifth member of the Power Pack siblings, Beetlejuice. The Power family has just moved into their new home, as you can see by them unpacking the shenanigans. Let's move it, gang. And I better not find clothes all over the place, so there'll be no TV for a week, understand? Joke's on you, Mom. This is the week the Power Pack TV pilot is airing. It's best they don't see that. Julie is very used to her power, being the fast-forward button on the VCR. Jack's power, however... Hi, Jack. Jack Power. Ah, uh, he has the power of being Robert Downey Jr. in The Pickup Artist. Alex has the power of lifting up a fish tank, but nothing else. Huh, does Dennis Mitchell's father usually break into their house to use the sink? Honey, someone tried flushing the kids again. Hi, Dad. Ooh, that kid has seen some shit. A family of cockroaches bursting out the stomach of a dead mouse. Mm -hmm. That was my retainer. Why is Dad so pissed? He just saved him a shitload on plumber bills. And what the hell is wrong with E.T. Drew Barrymore here? I miss my state goal. So do we, Katie Cat. And now she's gonna destroy the neighborhood with that nuclear bomb in her hand. Put Sonic the Hedgehog down, honey. That may seem charming, but that was the cat at first. She just killed it! The parents want the kids to keep their powers a secret, or in other words... It's important to remember that with power comes responsibility to yourselves and to this family. But not great power or great responsibility. <laughs> That's someone else's shtick. And this family's last name should be shtick and not power. Am I making myself clear? Dad is praying they let a school bus full of kids die. Oh, uh... Jack. Caught him getting small again. <laughs> so you call your penis Jack? That's what the magic blue pill is for. It contains the key to another superpower. What's Alex's other power? Class know-it-all. 
According to Newton's law of universal gravitation, the force between any two bodies is directly proportional to the product of their masses and inversely proportional to the distance between them. Good. Even that teacher was debating on deep pantsing him, and that girl was debating on whether to make out with him in the cafeteria or under the bleachers. Already these kids seem popular. They're even getting invited to gatherings. So, like, you're gonna come tomorrow, aren't you? I'm supposed to help my family unpack. Power unpack! Well, this settles it. She's decided to make out with him in the auditorium. Uh, I like it in here. It's quiet. I said the same thing when I saw the Gem and the Holograms movie. You could really feel the chemistry between these two. <laughs> it would have made more of an impression if he just crushed every bone in her hand. And why do these ensemble kids shows always have them scope out a haunted house at some point? I'll tell you what's in there, not the music for Power Pack. Okay, so, she's a dog. Jack is finally using his powers for good by breaking and entering and turning into the tiny old people from Mulholland Drive. Can't tell if he's small or if this is food of the gods. But I do know that that's a rat, not a dinosaur. So if this just ended now, could we assume that they all die? That's why this didn't get picked up to series. Dead. Ah, oh, but if it had just ended, we wouldn't have gotten that crossover with Power Pack and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that the world was asking for. Lots of interesting stuff in here. Like Edward Scissorhands, for instance. It sounds like he's in there somewhere. And this great Orson Welles painting. Dr. Mobius Butthead was far ahead of his time, much like Dr. Heinrich Assface. And just how many people were tortured in here before these kids showed up? They made the wise choice in stealing the coveted power pog. Meanwhile, back at home, Julie wants Alex to clean the kitchen so she can go to a party. If only she had some kind of power to do it very quickly, like this. The good news is you made it to the Paperboy stunt track in record speed. The bad news, you forgot to deliver any papers. Maybe it wasn't such a good idea to steal from Murder House. Oh great, Demon John Wayne Gacy is back to steal the children again. In Mobius' defense, he only needed one more magic disc to complete the whole set from the McDonald's Happy Meal. Whoa, so some superhero is going through puberty outside. Well, you know what Mom and Dad say about opening the door to strangers. That you could still do it because you could clearly take on any stranger that enters the house, even if you scream like a little girl. <laughs> Granted, she is a little girl who could bring about the apocalypse. Now they must answer their true calling, making a low-budget flying saucer movie. Jack, we weren't given our powers so that we could show off. Yes, but it'd be a very boring pilot if you didn't, like watching the random banter between the parents. First law in physics is what goes up must come down. <laughs> oh, honey, you get me so hot sometimes. And how is no one else noticing this? The plan is to return the stolen item to its resting place. Obviously, they just got done watching Night of Horror, because this pilot has the same plot, only they didn't steal the skull. Also, there's a little Zardoz thrown in there. <laughs> On the plus side, they found the greatest haunted house the neighborhood has ever seen. In the meantime, what's the soundtrack to Beetlejuice doing? Not 
being in Beetlejuice, that's for sure. And you should all be able to take on these creatures. Murder! You kids are supposed to use your powers for good, not to drop acid. Uh, Julie decided to clean the kitchen after all. Glad that was settled. But what isn't settled is how many people did Dr. Mobius kill and then keep their remains? And can he say anything else? I heard you the first 900 times you said it. What do you think they're in the house to do? There, put it back into the painting. Can't wait for Josh Trank's remake. We're putting the amulet back. We'll cause people's brains to explode all over the wall. And for it to be called Power Pafork. So, uh, is this it? Nothing to it. You stole something, got called out on it, and then put it back. You could have done this storyline without any of your superpowers. This story is so simple, a four-year-old without powers could have written it. They pad out the rest with quality family time. I'm really sorry. What are you sorry about? Oh, but they forgot to put back the items that they stole from Danny Elfman. Whoa, Alex gets a call from a girl. I'm glad I know that his love interest decided to call him. What I don't know is if Dr. Mobius is supposed to be a ghost, a serial killer, a vampire, a zombie, a predator, and who was that voice at the beginning of the episode who gave them the powers? I know I could look all this up, but... Mm, I don't wanna. Hell, I spent most of this thinking that a power pack was some NES accessory that I've never heard of. A power pack adaptation seems like it could work. In fact, with the success of films like The Incredibles, I'm positive it could. But this Saturday morning TV pilot made the horrible mistake of being a Saturday morning TV pilot. I'll stick with the Bugs Bunny and Tweety show, thank you very much. And the worst part is that Wolverine was not in this series at all. I don't like it when bootleg DVD covers lie to me! This is not good.